This is section 712C. We're still gonna be solving logarithmic equations, but we're gonna look at more advanced scenarios. And so we're gonna solve logarithmic equations and we're gonna go over what we call the change of base formula even more. Now the change of base formula, we've talked about it, but we've never really worked with it too much. And it's an actual formula that's really important because it allows us to manipulate logarithms further. Now, essentially, the change of base formula is this formula that we have here. Log base A of B equals log base C of B over log base C of A, where C is whatever base we want it to be. Now, typically, we could use this to convert it into you know, common logs that we can enter in our calculator, but in other instances where we may have to evaluate or condense or combine things together, using this change of base formula is gonna be able to help us simplify it. So express these as a single logarithm. If we notice, I can't combine these together just yet because I have log base two and I have log base four. I wanna be able to condense these and bring these together. So I'm gonna use the change of base formula. So I'm gonna convert this statement into base two. So this is still log two x, but now we said with the change the base formula, I can change it to whatever base. So I'm gonna do log base two, and it's gonna be this one, so x over this base, which is four. Now this is just two. So I have log base two of x plus one half, because it's over two, log base two of x. Now this is an exponent, so I have log base two of x plus x to the one half, or sorry, log base two of x to the one half. And because we're adding, I can combine it into one logarithm, so that's gonna be log base two of x, well this is one plus one half, so that's three halves. And that's gonna be my result. I mean, you could also say, you know, cube root of x squared, you know, just in case they want you to write it as a root, but that is an acceptable answer in my book. Let's look at part B. So I wanna change this base four into base two. Now as a hint, we typically wanna make the bases smaller to be able to do it. Well, I can't make two smaller than two, but I can make the four smaller into a two. So this is still gonna be log base two of x, but now, doing the change of base formula, I said want to convert it into base two, and so it's gonna be x minus one over four again. That is two, so I'm gonna get log base two of x plus one half, log base two of x minus one. That's an exponent again, so log base two of x plus log base two of x minus one to the one half. And I can combine those together into log base two of x times x minus one to the one half. And that's going to be my result. So we just played a little bit with the change of base formula. As you can see, these are solid reasons why we need to know this formula because whereas it seems I can't combine these together because the logs are different bases, the change of base formula allows me to do that. So now let's move on to solving more complicated scenarios when it comes to logarithms. So in this instance, log is on both sides. To get rid of the log, we're gonna use the inverse base, so base five. And so I'm gonna get 18 minus x squared equals six minus x, right? Because those cancel out. Now we have to ask ourselves, what type of equation is this? And so this is a quadratic equation now. So we're gonna solve it the way that we would as quadratic, bring everything to one side. So add x squared, subtract 18. So I'm gonna get x squared minus x, and then since that's minus 18, that's gonna be minus 12. Well, 
the way that we solve a quadratic equation is by either factoring or by using the quadratic formula. And so this will factor into x minus 4 and x plus 3. And so x equals 4 and negative 3. So now we have to check, right? I have to check for extraneous solutions. And so I need to take these values and plug them back in and see if they work. So if I plug 4 back in for x, I'm going to get log base 5 of 18 minus 4 squared. Does that equal log base 5 of 6 minus 4? So this becomes 18 minus 16, so that is log base 2. That will also be a 2. That's going to work. Plug it in negative 3. So I'm going to get log base 5 of 18 minus negative 3 squared. So that's going to be 9, because 18 minus 9 is 9. Does that equal log base 5? And this is going to be 6 minus negative 3. Well, that adds, and so we're going to get 9 again. They equal. So I can conclude that both of these are my solutions. This next one here. So log of x squared minus 3x equals 1. To cancel out the log, base 10. And so I'm going to get x squared minus 3x equals 10. And so now to get rid of, well, for us to be able to examine this, we have to think, okay, what type of equation this is. And so this is a quadratic equation again. And so now we're going to use the quadratic methods to be able to solve. So bring everything to one side. Factor, quadratic formula, I believe this factors again. Remember, that's the whole x thing, a times c, b, what factors. So I believe that is the factors. And so x equals 5 and negative 2. Now I have to check. So I have to take these values and plug them back in. So log of 5 squared minus 3 times 5. Does that equal 1? So this is going to be 25 minus 15, which is log 10. That's 1. So that works. Now negative 2. So log of negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2. So that's going to be 4 plus 6. That's log 10. Log 10 equals 1. That works. So I can conclude that both of those are my answer. Now in this next one, a little bit more manipulation. We're going to be using a few of those other skills that we need to do. So it looks like I have a log base 3. Could I make this into log base 3? So it's yes. Remember, I bring in negative to the front. OK, so I can do that. But now that 8. So I could leave the 8 alone. I could convert it into log base 3 if I wanted to. But let's leave the 8 alone. And so now. I can bring this to that side. So I'm going to add log base 3 of x. So I have log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of x. So that means I have two of them. So that's going to be 2 log base 3 of x. And that's going to equal 8. Divide both sides by 2. And then base 3 to both sides. I get x equals 3 to the fourth power. So that is 81. But now I have to take that and I have to plug it back in and check. So I'll take 81 and plug it into here. So log base 3 of 81, does that equal negative log base 3 of 81 plus 8? So I have. 4 equals negative 4 plus 8. 4 equals 4. So it works. So I can conclude that is a solution. 
Now this last one, this one is another one of those where we're gonna see some uh, crazy things. So combining them together, they're all the same base, great. So this is gonna be log of x over two. Remember, because minus means that we're gonna divide here, right? Since that's a minus, we're going to make sure that's in the denominator. Equals, and then log, and then on this side, we're gonna have x plus eight minus, so that's gonna be in the denominator, over x plus two. Base 10 to both sides to get rid of the log. x over two equals x plus eight over x plus two. So I can multiply the denominators to get them out. So I can multiply both sides by x plus two. Choop, choop, distributes. So I'm gonna get x squared plus two x over x equals x plus eight. Whoops, that should be over two. Then to get the two out of the denominator, multiply both sides by two. So that's gonna give me x squared plus two x equals, now distributing the two, two x plus 16. Well, minus the two x's on both sides, x squared equals 16, square root, and so I get x equals plus or minus four. So now I have to test. If I plug in, remember I said one of those shortcuts is I wanna make sure that what's inside my logarithm isn't negative or zero. If I plug in positive four, positive, 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 so we're good. But if I plug in negative four, I get log of negative four here and then log of negative two here because negative four plus two is negative two. So the negative four doesn't work, so my answer is only x equals four. So what did we learn today? Well, we talked about the change of base formula and its uses, and then we talked about how we solve more complex logarithms. So the change of base formula, that was log base A of B equals log whatever base of B and over the log of that same base of A. It is a formula that we can use to be able to manipulate whatever logarithm and change it into any base. And so another alternative way to solve these, we used a quadratic formula and it seemed like we did like a form of cross multiplying. So just know that after we do that simple step of trying to get rid of the log, there may be more algebraic things that we have to do to solve it. So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.